Okay, this is my presentation for Bergen, Belgium. Um, Bergen is in, actually located in the Wallonia region of Belgium, which is a French-speaking city. So therefore, the locals call um, Bergen by its French name, Mons. So for this report, I'm going to be referring to this city as Mons, Belgium. All right, so when I visited this city, um, it was a pretty rainy and stormy day, so it was actually very quiet. But typically, uh, according to the locals, this is actually a very busy city, and there's a lot of tourists all year round, mostly in the spring and the fall. Um, as you can see in the first slide, I visited the Grand Place, that's the bottom left. The On the right is the Church of St. Waldru. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but... Saint Waldru, and I'll explain that later in the presentation. Um, and then the top left is also the inside of the Church of Waldru, and then the top right is another angle of the Grand Place, and then the building on the left with the Belgian flag is the City Hall. And then you can also see another tower. So some geographical info about uh, Mons. It is in southwestern uh, Belgium, located in the Wallonia region. So it's French-speaking, and it's about an hour and 15 minutes from Ghent by car. It's only 21 kilometers from the border of France, so it's very common for French tourists to come and visit. And it's very well connected with highways and... Um, highways, trains, and it even has an airport. So it's very easy to access. Um, the population as of 2019 was 95,613 residents. However, because of the greater Mods area, like the, all the smaller towns around it, it's around 250,000 residents in the total grand area. It's also very, it has a lot of schools, so the, most of the population in Mods during the, the year is actually students. And the history behind it is it used to be a mining town and was also a very pivotal moment in uh, World War I. Some tourist attractions. So in Mons, Mons has over seven museums and is actually considered an architectural model, marvel, attracting a lot of architects to see its Gothic and neoclassical style architecture. And Mons is also home to a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a World UNESCO uh, World Heritage Festival. So it's a very historical city and has a lot of character and charm. Some of the attractions listed on the next slide are museums. So this is a list of some of the museums. The most famous ones known to tourists are the Museum of Doudou, the Museum uh, Maison Van Gogh, uh, BAM, the Museum of Fine Art, and the Mons Memorial Museum. The Mons Memorial Museum is a, actually a World War Museum um, remembering the Battle of Mons that happened here. Some public spaces are the Grand Place, that's the, pretty much the most famous one, and then the famous building is the Mons Belfry, and some churches. The most famous one is the St. Waltrud Collegiate Church and the St. Waldru Coll uh, Collegiate Church. Okay. So first main attraction we have is the Mons Belfry. It's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site and stands 87 meters tall. This is actually built in the 17th century and throughout the year it has 49 chiming bells that ring out a traditional song throughout the year. I didn't hear any of this, so I don't think it's every single day that they play. So yeah. Then we have the Grand Place, which is the main square and the heart of Mons. It's actually lined full of patios and restaurants and little pubs. And during the year, it's very popular and very busy here. Um, this is where the main hotel and the uh, town hall are as well. And um, yeah, I went and sat in a little pub there and was able to try one of the local beers. I can't remember. The, it was called something like the, the Grinch or the Goblin. Next up is the BAM, or B-A-M, the Museum of Fine Art. Um, throughout the years, they've had many memorable exhibitions, like Andy Warhol in 2014 and Van Gogh in 2015. But for the most part, it's modern art. So some of the gastronomical specialties for this area 
is Porkchop la Berdui. It's uh, translates to pork chop in the mud, which is a pork chop with a wine sauce, mustard, shallots, and pickles, and it's typically known to be in mods, um, and it's more of a high-end meal, so I didn't actually end up trying it. Then we also have raton cardor, it's uh, pancakes with ham, white sauce, and nutmeg, and then one of their famous cheese is the pa le pave montois, and it's a uh, soft rind cheese of cow's milk. And then on this slide, we have some of the um, famous or just known exports of mods. So a lot of honey or butchers, chocolates, uh, etc. Now we're at the historical link. So, so now we're on to the historical link. So Mons is most well known in history for their efforts, actually more just involvement in World War I during the Battle of Mons. But we'll go right to the beginning. During the 7th century, Romans occupied Mons. The name Mons actually means hill in Latin. So during the time that the Romans had set up a camp on the main hill in Mons, that's where the city got its name from. And it's actually where the belfry stands today. Uh, Mons was actually very industrial at, uh, during the 16th century and um, was a, known to be a, uh, a mining town. Then later on, by the 18th century, it was later occupied by Dutch, Eng Spanish, French, and English armies and forces. Were taken over by a French nobility called Waldru, and that's actually why one of the churches is named after that. And there's actually a festival called the Festival of Dudu as well. And around nine, around the 1400s, they started to build castles, a town hall, a clock tower. And then through all these advancements, Mons became a really strong leader in trade, goods, and craftsmen, and very prosperous. After the independence of 1830, Belgium underwent rapid industrialization, and Mons started to become a more of a military town, setting up railways and canals. By the 1900s, it was fully established. As of August 23rd, 1914, the British Army stepped foot into Belgium, actually in Mons, and was the first battle fought against World War, uh, the first battle fought against Germany in World War I by the British Army, and was actually the first British soldier to die by the hands of Germany in, at this battle. So the hills and the canals in Mons actually created a very complicated terrain for this battle and resulted actually in the British losing to the Germans as they were extremely outnumbered. And this leads to the Mons Memorial Museum. So the first and last British men to fall during conflict actually both died in Mons, so making it the first and the last. For now it stands as a memorial for both Commonwealth and German soldiers, and they're buried together being a symbol of being a symbol of being united in peace for eternity, and now being called the Garden of Peace. This is the Moss Memorial um, Museum and bur burial ground. So now to the interview. I interviewed one of the local people. I couldn't find a lot of locals, so I actually interviewed the tourism place. And uh, this lady, her name is Ora Lee, and she's twenty seven. So one of my first questions for her was, do you live here? And she does, but she hasn't lived here her whole life, only one year. So she, can you list three reasons why you love Mons? And she said, cultural diversity, lots of things to do, museums, cultural activities, a lot of young people like the university, and a really beautiful city. Is there a lot of tourism here? And she said, yes, Mons was just named the European capital, uh, just named the European cultural capital in 2015, but most of the tourism is from April to June, All Saints Day, and September. Is there a specialty, f and then I asked, is there a specialty food or drink here in Mons? And she said there was a pork chop with special sauce. It's called a mud sauce and pickles. So that's her referring to the pork chop, le berdui. Um, for a special drink here, there's a lot of local breweries, so there's a lot of local beers to choose from. But the most famous one is the, the beer La Montaz. And if you were here for one day, what sightseeing thing would you recommend for a tourist? 
and she said the old city center or the Belfort. So for my personal observations, at this time, the city was really quiet, but the, for the people that I met, they were all really friendly and they're all accustomed to tourists and very welcoming. Um, the culture is, must be very vibrant and enjoyable and the city has a lot of rich culture and historic meaning. So it would be cool if I had the chance to go back and visit on a nice warm spring day because I think it would be really cool. So that was my month's presentation. Thanks for listening.